As dawn breaks on the 1950s, the world of aviation stands on the cusp of a new era. Jet engines are reshaping the very essence of flight, and an insatiable quest for speed defines the decade, just as the very fabric of flight is being rewritten. Today, as we commemorate a milestone of 100,000 subscribers, let's take a look at the aircraft that embodies speed and power while becoming the forerunner of a new age, the F-100 Super Sabre. Picture a world rising from the ashes of World War II, yearning for progress and innovation. North American aviation, already legends from their work on the P-51 Mustang and F-86 Sabre, dream of piercing the sound barrier, not just in a dive, but in level flight. But there is a problem, Transonic flight, that elusive realm between subsonic and supersonic speed, presents challenges. The aircraft that would go on to conquer these challenges begins its life as the Sabre 45, which was a reference to its 45-degree wing sweep. The inception of the YF-100 was fraught with the turbulence of mastering this difficult flight regime. More on that in a minute. The engineers at North American Aviation, with their unyielding determination and countless man-hours of research, designed the wings with the previously mentioned 45-degree sweepback. This bold design, coupled with a slender and aerodynamic fuselage, allowed the Super Sabre to transition gracefully in level flight into that elusive supersonic domain otherwise known as Mach 1. Even looking modern today, the F-100's final design is nothing short of a masterstroke. As a result, in 1953, less than 10 years after World War II, a moment of triumph arrives. The F-100, with its gleaning aluminum and titanium skin, takes to the skies for the first time. It doesn't just meet expectations, it surpasses them. Mach 1.25 in level flight is not just a number, but a proclamation of human achievement, a symbol of aeronautical triumph. However, the Super Sabre was cutting-edge technology for its time, and as a result, very tricky to fly, especially in the early days of its career. There were several accidents during its testing phase and its first two years of USAF service, some of them unfortunately fatal. Following investigations and some minor redesign work, the F-100 returned to flight status in 1955. The 1950s and 60s were a period of rapid technological strides, which would see numerous fighters gracing the skies. The F-100, while sharing the heavens with the likes of the MiG-19 and its kin, the F-86 Sabre carves its niche. It's not merely about its afterburning Pratt & Whitney J-57 engine, or its suite of advanced avionics for its time. It's about the fusion of design, capability, and mission role that makes the Super Sabre truly distinctive. Without a doubt, the Super Sabre inspired a generation of pilots. With the US Air Force Thunderbirds, the F-100 becomes an ambassador of aerial artistry. Streaking across the skies in choreographed ballets, it captivates countless hearts, embodying the pinnacle of human achievement in aviation. Given its designation as F-100, the aircraft would sometimes be referred to as the Hun, which is a shortened version of the word hundred. The F-100 also is the first of the Century Series, a lineage of iconic aircraft that many feel represent the golden age in fighter plane development. And yet, the tail of the Super Sabre doesn't stagnate. The F-100 sees multiple iterations each refining its prowess. Variants like the F-100C and F-100D bring aerial refueling to the table. Along with advanced avionics and a beefier payload, this turns a sleek fighter into a multi-role fighter bomber. There are even reconnaissance and wild weasel or suppression of enemy air defense versions of the Super Sabre built. In the world of the Cold War's rapidly evolving threats, the Super Sabre ensures it remains not just relevant, but formidable and versatile. This is another testament to its great design. 
There is more to the Super Sabre than raw speed. In the jungles of Vietnam, the F-100 carves its legacy, adapting to the brutal demands of close air support or CAS. It is equipped with an arsenal to be reckoned with. Rockets, bombs, and the thunderous M39 cannons make it a guardian angel for ground forces and a nightmare for adversaries. Indeed, in the initial phases of the conflict, the Super Sabre proved to be a potent cast platform. However, as the war progressed, the landscape quickly changed. The jet faced escalating threats and was constrained by ever stringent rules of engagement. These factors led to a noticeable increase in the losses experienced by the F-100. Ultimately, in the Vietnam conflict, the Super Sabre would be replaced by the F-105 Thunder Chief, soon to be the subject of its own video. The F-100 Super Sabre in its time broke barriers and set standards. It was a beacon of human endeavor, of pushing limits and achieving the extraordinary. Now, as we reminisce about the F-100's illustrious journey from high-speed interceptor, Thunderbird, to close air support attacker, let's take a moment to reflect on our own. You see, before YouTube came along, I used to struggle to find like-minded aviation enthusiasts to discuss, debate, and yes, sometimes even disagree on certain topics. I was the guy that would constantly talk about airplanes to rolling eyes. You've given me a platform to share, learn, and continue to tell aviation stories. I am truly grateful. Your comments and support have helped me through some challenging times in my life. This channel began with me taking air-to-air -air pictures of my friend's airplanes and has evolved into creating 3D animations of concept or even forgotten aircraft. This journey has turned into an adventure defined by discovery, passion, and a thirst for knowledge to share stories that inspire, connect, and hopefully educate. That works both ways. You've made me aware of airplanes I didn't know even existed and have helped me tell stories that needed to be told. As the channel grew, I've been able to interview pilots, authors, maintainers, and designers that are all part of the tales of these incredible machines. Along the way, I've been able to collaborate with some incredible content creators with channels much bigger than my own. They not only worked with me, but guided me into how to make better videos and more importantly, tell better stories. This milestone of 100,000 subscribers is more than a number. It is a testament to a shared journey. A journey that is marked by storytelling, by the relentless pursuit of knowledge, and by the sheer love for the skies, the aircraft that soar them, and the stories they harbor. And together, we've created a tapestry of tales that hopefully will live long after me. As the Super Sabre's legacy continues to inspire generations, I hope this channel does the same. Here's to the next 100,000, to more stories waiting to be told, and to the limitless expanse of aviation history waiting to be explored. My heartfelt gratitude goes out to each one of you for being a part of this incredible journey. Every airplane has a story. You are part of it. Now you know.